Hello, friends. You've all been asking to see Lynn. <laughs> Here's Lynn. Hi. See, she's still That's with your me. your old buddy, Lynn. Hi there. Hi. You got any songs for us or anything? Um, Short ones. Peter and I got a lot to do today. You are my sunshine. Me? My I'm your sunshine? sunshine. <laughs> you make me happy when skies are gray. Okay, so we're at my son's house, and um, this is Peter. Hi. Hi, uh, JC's, JC's Travel Stories. <laughs> that Followers? Was... No, that's Instagram. Uh, Subscribers. <laughs> yeah, you got it, you got it. <laughs> Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. So, we've had a sunny day in Oregon, finally. It's been t-shirt weather, but now it's getting a little chilly. It's cooler. <laughs> uh, Peter and I, since I didn't have a video made for tomorrow morning, are going to do a little bug show for you, because it's Peter's business. He sells insects. So, what are we gonna do today, Peter? I'm going to tell you a little bit about my business and I'm going to show you guys some bugs. What I do for a living is sell both live and dead insect material and by insect I really mean uh, things to include scorpions and tarantulas and all sorts of other bugs, things that are called bugs, um, centipedes, millipedes. Sierra's just getting home. Sierra, come on out! Yeah. His granddaughter, JC's granddaughter. Uh oh, here she comes. What's on your mind today, Sierra? What's on your mind today? JC Travel Stories is on my mind today. <laughs> oh, you're the best granddaughter I have. Tell me something I don't know. <laughs> so what are we doing today? I was just telling them about my business. Can I open it? Um, give me just a second. Um, I, uh, I uh, grew up collecting bugs in the backyard, in uh, my dad's backyard. By the way, I just have to interrupt here for a second. Uh-huh. Are my kids good looking or what? <laughs> Brother and sister? Um, <laughs> oh. 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 <laughs> okay. So I spent a lot of time in the backyard when I was a kid, and I always wanted to know what everything was, and it didn't matter whether it was a plant or a bird or a bug, I wanted to know the name of everything. Okay, where were we? Uh, I think you needed a break because your arm was getting tired. That's, exa <laughs> that's exactly right. <laughs> All right, I was, I was uh, just summarizing uh, in, the, in the shortest uh, way possible that uh, I started keeping bugs as pets and trading with people around the world, uh, stick insects. And then I had amassed so many of them, partly with mom's help and keeping them alive, trading things back and forth with people that eventually I got to the point where nobody really had anything that I wanted anymore. And so people started offering me money for some of the things that I had. And I was a little resistant to that idea at first, but I, it got a little bit easier every time someone actually paid me for something. And that's how my business was born. So what are you gonna show us today? So right here on my business card, we've got an orchid mantis, and I'm gonna show you those today. Okay. And then on the back side is my other business, the dead insect sales, and I also have some blue death veining beetles. These are two of the most popular pet bugs. And the reason that blue death veining beetles are so popular is that they are one of the easiest to care for species. They're desert beetles, and so they're adapted to living in really arid areas uh, with very few resources in terms of food, and they're called death feigning beetles Whoa. because they play dead. <laughs> they're not dead? No, they're not dead. They're all playing dead. We'll leave them down here for a little bit, and hopefully by the time I get done talking about a few of the other beetles I have here on the table, um, they'll look more they'll like this up. one in the picture. Yeah, they but they might not. It's a little chilly out here. They don't have coats to put on like you. So here's a few other kinds of desert beetles that are also adapted to dry conditions. This one here is a darkling beetle, and you have probably seen these lots of times as you yeah, I travel you, around. I helped you collect those in South Dakota. Okay, yep, right? Yep, they've got them. Yeah, they're pretty widespread. We have them here in Oregon too. Um, 
very active. They usually come out at night and they forage for things on the yeah, desert that's, floor. That's why I have uh, extra lights on the front of my little motorcycle. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Here's another kind of darkling beetle just like that, but this one has a little bit of fuzz on it. It's called a woolly, actually. They have little orange uh, hairs coming out. Do you have any of those them. that we got that had a little blue ring around them? Oh, those weren't darkling beetles. Those were a kind of ground beetle. Oh. They're called warrior beetles, which warrior. is a really provocative sounding name. Um, and they're considerably larger than this. And they're predatory, whereas these are more like scavengers. Hmm. And so these are all different kinds of desert beetles I have here. They're all sort of related to the blue death feigning beetles down there. It's another one here with a little pointed abdomen. This one here is another kind of death feigning beetle, and so you see yeah, that he, it's playing dead. And if you watch this species for a little while, you'll see he's fainted. You'll see that his way, his legs are wiggling a little bit. Yeah. So it's, that's part of that's part of the. Uh, Mom, the death pose for Mom, them. You see Mom him wiggling. Does that in her sleep. Right. Right. You see him. <laughs> <laughs> I do. And here's yet another kind of death feigning beetle here. This one's called a that's rough one. death feigning beetle because it has that's sort of a. Away. Is there one getting away? So people. Uh, use these for pets? Yeah, yeah, they just put them in a cage. Um, they require very little care and uh, very little food. You can actually just put a little piece of dog kibble, a little piece of dog food or cat food in with them and that'll sustain them for weeks actually. Hmm. Um, even, even a group like this, they eat so very little. And this species right here, the blue death feigning beetles, yeah. they can they can actually, they're actually very active beetles too, even though they're playing dead right now. Um, they're very convincing in this because if a predator or something were to come up to them, most animals don't like to eat dead things because it can make them sick. I prefer eating dead things. Right. Well, not not things, not dead things that you find out in the, you know the middle of the desert. You know, to be covered with bacteria and <laughs> things like that. <laughs> I mean, I don't mean to speak for you, but that's, that's, I, I don't know what I got JC it. travel stories <laughs> likes to do, but. Um, so those those are desert beetles, and uh, I also brought some mantises out here to show you. And uh, the orchid mantis here. Before I show you the orchid mantis, I want to show you this one here, called a giraffe mantis. And they are called giraffe mantises because they have extremely long necks. A lot of people are familiar with praying mantises. It's one of the more familiar bugs to people. Um, they have these four legs right here that they capture their prey with. And a lot of mantises like stick and leaf insects, they use camouflage to blend in with the foliage or the sticks around them. And so this one is sort of spreading itself out like a stick right now. Because he's looking at me. He's, he's a stick-like mantis. He... So, there he goes. Oh, he jumped. They can jump. He doesn't have his wings yet. Uh, the males get wings. The females actually don't have wings when they are mature. And so this one's only about a half to a third as long as it will be ultimately. Really? And the reason I brought him out is because as they grow, they shed their skin. And this one just recently shed its skin. This is the old skin here, the exoskeleton. It's on the outside of their body. And so in order for them to get bigger, they shed that old they shed that old skin and they come out a little bigger than they were before. Do they call that molting? Yes. Yep, molting. Uh, I'm just the bus driver. <laughs> He's always been more than the bus driver. <laughs> so when mantises hatch out, they're actually very small. And this is a baby orchid mantis, the species right down here. Uh, there's the orchid mantis on the business card, and wow, he's so small, I can't find him. Oh there he is. Uh, that's just a little tiny orchid mantis. Wow, and I'm going to really zoom in. I wonder if it'll focus. It did. Look at that. And I'm going to pull out uh, three other ones, each one a little bit bigger than the last one. So that's... That's actually what's called a second instar. They, when they hatch their first instar, an in instar in is, is the stage of life between the molts. Oh, okay. So this one here is older. Is this a lot? <gasps> is it a lot? Yeah, it's a lot. You see it doing these little somersault things. That's how they evade predators. Um, but they will calm down rather quickly once I get them into my hand here. This is actually a female, you can tell, because she has a green necklace there. The males, their necklace is brown. And if you can imagine this resting on an orchid flower, waiting for a bee to come to pollinate the flower. Looks like an orchid. Yeah. 
Um, so they, they? They, they, they blend in with flowers in their natural habitat, um, just like the other mantis blends in with sticks. This one would blend in with white flowers. And you can see these lobed legs right here. That's part of why they're called orchid mantises, is because they have those lobes just like, um, just like orchids do. Mm -hmm. back in there. So, let me ask you a question. Wait, wait till I get my hold of my camera. <coughs> Excuse me. How much do you how how much are these bugs? Well, the blue death feeding beetles yeah. uh, are ten dollars each. You sell and those? They can, they can live for seventeen years. Seven? Yeah. I mean, wow. This this is an adult, and there's no way of knowing how old it is. Yeah, but they can, can you live a really long time. I have people who leave reviews on the website that say things, you know, I bought mine six years ago and they're still, they're really? still doing really well. Uh, can you tell male or female? I can, yes. Um, the difference between the males and females, it's really subtle and, and difficult to, uh, to see, but the males have little bristles that line their antennae, and unless you really, really zoom in, you can't see it. Yeah, Fem see females that. lack that characteristic. So, how much was the uh, orchid mantis, the one that is a, there's a picture on your business mm -hmm. card? Um, those, those ones are very desirable. They're rarely available. You know, it's like economics. It's always factors of supply and demand. Yeah. But how pretty something in can factor into the, the cost of it also. So, the orchid mantises, when they're babies, sell for $30 a piece. And I generally never sell them past that point because they're very easy to sell out. You know, an egg case might hatch anywhere from 30 to 100 babies. So you can do the math on that. If you hatch, if you hatch 100 of them and sell them at $30 a piece, that's $3,000. But they're difficult to breed. And uh, there aren't that many people that do that, even though it's been a species that's been in the U.S. hobby for a couple decades. Um, Are they like, uh, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, because remember, I'm just the bus driver. <laughs> one, of the, <laughs> one of the things that always amazed me about when we collected those um, egg cases for... The mantis egg cases? Yeah. Uh-huh. That when they hatch... Uh-huh. What happens is they eat each other. They're cannibalistic mm -hmm. because that's the only thing that's small enough for them to prey upon. Well, for, for that, you're talking about a local species that we used to collect, and they're not actually a native species to our area. They are the European mantis, yeah. and so they've established here. And so what we would do, we would keep them in a container altogether, and we would feed them fruit flies, which is a very, very small fly. Yeah. And uh, the ones that we have in particular are wingless, and so they can't fly away. It makes them easier to feed. But the mantises we would leave together as well, rather than separating them. Mm -hmm. And they would sort of play king of the hill in there and eat each other. And that was part of the Do the what orchid mantises eat each other? They will eat each other, but because they are so valuable, we always separate them oh, out yeah. right away. Well, that was my thing. If, yeah, like, if you, you see could the have $30 that. bill eating another, Another thirty dollar yeah. bill, like that, you know. That's where I was going. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That that hurts, and it starts to hurt really fast. So I'm going to show you now uh, an adult male orchid mantis, and do you get nervous doing this outside instead of in the shop? Um, this this male in particular is very flighty. Yeah. He has full wings. Yeah. Um, insects never get their wings until they are mature. And so I'm not really going to pull him out of here. I'm just going to let you kind of see him. And he's about an inch long. You can see my finger next to him as a frame of reference there. Yeah. And in this species, one of the reasons why they are so rare in the hobby is because the males mature so much more quickly than the females. And they are so much smaller, too, than the females. And so the female looks at the male as a snack. I've got an adult female in here too, and she's much less likely to fly away, so I'm actually going to pull her out of here. The, the, the females eat the males. The female, yeah, that's, a, that's something that anybody what, that's Black familiar widows, that's not why they call it black widow spiders, black widow spiders? Uh, they, will, they will eat the males too, but the males are so dinky that the black widow... Wouldn't be much of a even, meal? Yeah, doesn't, almost doesn't <laughs> even notice it. Um, but this is an adult female orchid mantis here, oh my. and um, you can see the size difference there. So this is between these, the two these of are them. both like the same adult instar, you call it? Yeah, they're both adults. That's an adult male down there, and then the adult female up Ooh. here. 
and the size difference is really, really that's dramatically amazing. That's different. Amazing. And so the female will sometimes eat the male. I'm always very careful when I put them together. Let me move around and get a different angle on her. Sure. She's amazing. She has pointed eyes, and those eyes actually get darker at night, and it's believed that that helps them to see. In. And what's this one? It's a ghost mantis. Scientific name is Phylocrania paradoxa. Sort of a paradox. It's got all kinds of weird things going on. They camouflage in really well with dried leaves. No kidding. And uh, you see the little flanges on the Oh, back I was looking at the wrong end as being the front. That's or, his head. Yep, the head's up on this end right here. Oh, well, you're picking out a roach to show me. What is that? What's this girl's name? That is Callie. Callie? Yes. And she's a bearded dragon. Is, is she, she full like grown? Those. Yeah, she's getting very old now. I've had her over 10 years. Really? You have? Mm -hmm. Yep, her mate passed away just within the last year. We don't have anything for a size reference. There's my thumb. Mm -hmm. How's that? Oh my gosh. So, this is a cockroach? Yes, this is called a rhino roach. A rhino roach? Yeah, it's a species from Australia. It would be wrong to call it a cockroach? No, you could. it is definitely a cockroach. It's huge. It is. It's a good-sized one, and it's got these spiky legs. They're We're, also called uh, uh, giant burrowing roaches, and you can see that with those legs, they could move through the dirt pretty well. Jeez. And uh, this is an adult male. He ha They're called a rhino roach because he has this sort of rhino-like scoop horn up here on the head. Oh, yeah. And this is the most expensive cockroach species in the pet hobby. How much does that cost? Um, when I sell the babies of the species, um, and keep in mind that they can, they can live 10 years, when I sell the babies of this species, I sell them for no less than $70 each. Oh, a blue fainting, blue death fainting beetle. And he was walking. There he goes. Yeah, they're super cute. Everybody loves those. Everybody always says this is... That's the, the ones that were like playing possum out there on the table, right? Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.